Before I get into the film, I wanted to say I'm going to try and develop my channel my relationship with you guys a bit more. I've updated my Patreon here, and will be looking to discuss more directly with you through that, including through asking which videos you'd like to see next, and offering credits for patrons on my videos going forwards that you will see at the end of this video too. To make sure you always get notified of my videos when they go live, do make sure that when you subscribe, you hit the bell icon here. Thanks, and on to the video. Michael Mann's heat has been talked about a lot. If you look online, there are a ton of videos and essays and video essays on the film, especially in regards to its celebrated LA bank heist sequence. So why do I want to talk about it? I think there are still things to take from the film, things I've noticed but not seen mentioned, that really hone in on why the action in the film works so well. To begin with, I want to state that of course Heat is not an action film. Action is such a broad genre, I question whether it can really be applied properly to anything anyway. Look at me. But Heat certainly is more a crime drama thriller with some very effective action sequences. Without the action, the film would still work brilliantly. The action is important though, and deepens the film. And I want to introduce a quote from Michael Mann, taken from an interview with Rolling Stone, that for me, helped shape my understanding of what the action sequences really mean to the film. There is a fusion in the end of the two men in this perfect counterpoint. The way that these stories are told and how these lives are opposed against each other is maybe why we're still talking about heat. It was the parallels that interested him, and how they increasingly intersect. If you look at the action sequences, we begin with guys in masks hidden from us, and Pacino appearing afterward. Then you see them fighting together as groups, before finally, we only have De Niro and Pacino in a one-on-one, -on -one, where we really feel either could win, and it would be a satisfactory conclusion to the story. De Niro is let down by his partners, and Pacino is struggling with his personal life. They offer each other purpose, something they even admit to one another. I don't know how to do anything. It's not personal because they want revenge, it's personal because they found something in each other that matters. For me, the action sequences reflect this. That increasing focus, that determination. Though potentially not necessary to telling the story, for it to be as effective as it is, the quality of the action sequences is completely paramount to man's mission. Man had that obsession too. He knew how to tell this story, and he knew how important the action was to the characters. If you look at the restaurant scene, you see how close his original go at the material, L.A. Takedown was, to what Heat became. Brother, you are going down. Brother, hey, you gotta go down. You see it too, however, in the action sequences. Of course, it is the character work that became more important to man when trying again. The philosophy, the understanding of who these guys are, and what they want in life, and from one another, that made Heat what it is. Along with a greater understanding of film language from man. Heat is very nearly double the length of LA Takedown, but the later film is far easier to get through due to how exquisitely put together it is, with never better performances from everyone involved. In the opening, you're with characters you don't yet really know. You are simply seeing them work together as a crew, being shown their cold professionalism. You know who Wayne Grow is, but otherwise it is not incredibly clear which is which. The fact he stands out so much, and is the one that causes the most problems, shows how well-oiled this machine usually would be, and how they still quickly overcome that issue and get away successfully. When Pacino's Vincent Hanna arrives, we see him at work too, immediately understanding who they are, but not yet who De Niro's Neil McCauley is. We now get a sense of what they will mean to one another. Of course, by the time the film gets to the bank heist, we are well aware of who these characters are, as are they. They've met, they've shared, not quite pleasantries, but an understanding. Now, this is about showing just how obsessed, and less professional perhaps, Vincent is becoming, and how Neil is beginning to lose the perfect hold on things he had to this point maintained. I want to talk a little about Man here, and how he factored into this scene. 
Here's what he had to say about the bank heist. We could only get downtown on Saturday and Sunday. So it was six days of shooting, but we had to do it on a Saturday and Sunday and then do something else, and then come back the following Saturday and Sunday to do the next section. It had to be very, very well planned and very modular. So the continuity has got to be perfect, which it was anyway, because I'd planned it out in pre-production. Because man planned it out in pre-production. Nobody knew the importance of how the sequences were covered would be to the greater story, as well as man. I bang on about this a lot, but with how creative choices in action are becoming more and more dictated away from the director, in films where action takes up a much higher percentage of the screen time than in a film like Heat, we are definitely losing something in big budget, thrilling cinema. We are getting less and less memorable action set pieces, ones that will be remembered for decades to come, and I think this is why. I don't think any of the action set pieces would be anywhere near as good had they been planned away from man or shot by a second unit. The focus moving from professional to obsessive is shown through the filmmaking, the constant beat in the bank, to the cacophony of gunfire outside it. The increasing speed of the edits, though it should be noted they never cut too quickly and is always easy to follow. The way the camera follows Vincent as he sprints to his mark a shot later repeated at the airport toward the final shootout. Everything technical is about telling and focusing that story. The stakes are increased by the loss of team members before and during the shootout too, and the removal of characters further focuses who we are following, just as their loss is causing the drama to be more intense and the challenge more difficult. This happens throughout the film, raising tension but really zeroing in on the storyline that is most important. As an aside too, in regards to shaky cam and quick cut editing, though it is used here, especially a shaky camera, being gritty and handheld is not to create confusion. It feels chaotic, but we still know what is happening. This shot, one of the more shaky ground level of the sequence, is literally used to focus in on an area. Whereas shaky cam these days is used to obscure, here it is precisely to build tension reveal geography, and show distance. Pacino is somewhat reckless here, as is De Niro, they are no longer as professional and calculated. Pacino is willing to fire through crowds and buy children to get his target, and De Niro won't leave a friend behind to get away. We are seeing them change, how they affect one another, getting the sense of driving obsession through the filmmaking. By the final sequence, it all comes to a head. Well, two of them, Vincent Hanna and Neil McCauley's. We've gone from separate sequences at the same crime scene to almost all-out war, and now it is a one-on-one. -on -one. The focus has fallen entirely on the two leads, who are given an equal footing, in a location with no clear landmarks or features. With an airport light, both can use to their advantage. They have just their matched wits and weapons to support them. If anything, since we no longer need to know anything more about their professionalism or tactics, this far simpler set piece is harder to track, which does work due to the fact that these characters are in a tense situation, not knowing quite where the other is. We really don't know who could win. Man again specifically uses style here to dictate character and plot. It is focusing us entirely on the characters, right up to the last moment until that zoom, that focus. That's it. Man has directed us to the conclusion. Pacino gets his kill. De Niro gets to feel connected to someone. Both stories are now fused, entirely into one and complete. And the action, how it was planned, directed, edited, lit, the audio, was a big part of why it worked so well. And once they are finally fused, that is it. The story has come to an end. The focus on their relationship has reached its conclusion. De Niro, Pacino, Man. The way that these stories are told, and how these lies are opposed against each other, is maybe why we're still talking about Heat. How these stories are told. The performance, the direction, the action. That's why we still talk about Heat. Many have cribbed from the film for style and atmosphere but really it's the greater sense of a character and direction that should be absorbed. 
Not even man himself has been able to repeat what he achieved with Heat, though not for lack of trying. Even as a remake, Heat feels like a one-of-a-kind success story. Through intense research, careful development, intricate planning, and a dream team working together at the height of their talent and power, a classic was made. Thank you for watching. Thank you.